Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to go over some exponential modeling and some logistic modeling and look at the problems that we want, might come uh, across and how we solve them. So we're going to, I'm not going to read the problems. I'm going to let you go ahead and read them through and you can pause it and come back. So for the first one here, we want to find the equation that represents the average cost of this tuition. So uh, any exponential function can be written as y equals y sub zero e to the kt, where y sub zero is the initial population, or our initial value. So we're always going to look at the problem and look for our initial value when time is equal to zero and k is a constant. So in this case, time is equal to zero corresponds to 1996. So we're going to go ahead and know that in 1996, which was 2,975, that was what the initial value was. So 2,975. So we're going to have y equals 2,975 e to the kt. Well, I need a solve for k. I can't leave k all by itself. So I'm going to use the fact that I know at t equals 1, which was 1997, one year after 1996, we have this amount. So that amount's going to go here for y. 3,211 is equal to 2,975 e to the kt is 1. So I'm going to put 1 there. I'm going to leave it out because we don't need a 1 there. I'm going to divide both sides by 2975. 2975. And then I'm going to have 3211 over 2975 equals e to the k. How do I solve this? I need to take the ln. So k is equal to ln of 3211 over 2975 I'm going to calculate that in my calculator. So let's bring up my TI-84. And using my TI-84, excuse this stuff here, I'm going to have LN of 3211 divided by 2975. And I get 0 0.076. OK, 0 0.076. So I'm going to have this to be 0 0.076. So my equation is going to be y equals 2975 e to the 0 0.076 t, or x, whatever you want, you want to use. This is my model that models my situation. So I'm going to use this model to estimate when the cost, what the cost is in 2003. In 2003, we started in 1996. So this is going to be a time of seven years after 1996. So I'm just going to plug in seven in right there and solve that and figure out what that value is. So I'm going to go down to my calculator again. And I'm going to enter this in just as I see it. All right, let me erase some stuff here. Get out of our way. Okay, let's look at this again here. I'm going to take 2975 times E to the 0 0.076 times 7 years, and I'm going to get 5,064. So my value here is Y equals 5,064. Okay, all right. Next question here is, find the year that the average tuition would be $10,000. We're still using our mathematical model right here to find this out. So instead, this is now our y value and we're looking for t. So we're going to have 10,000 equals 2975e to the 0.076t. I'm going to take divide 2975 over and I'm going to have 10,000 over 2975 equals e to the 0 0.076 time. I'm going to take an L in both sides. So I'm going to have the natural log of 10,000 over 2975 is equal to 0 0.076 time. What do I do here? Last step, divide by 0 0.076. So our time is going to be ln of 10,000 over 2975 all over 0. all over 0 0.076. So I'm going to enter that in my calculator and see what I get. Here we go. 
So ln of 10,000 divided by 2975. And we're going to divide that by 0 0.076. And we're going to get 15.95. So 15.95 is the years. Okay, so 15.95. Now that's about 16. So about 16 years later, 16 years after 1996 is 2012. All right, so I want to just talk about very briefly um, what half-life is. So we're gonna look at this next question and we're just gonna talk about what half-life means. And tomorrow in class, I'd like you to uh, we're going to be doing something with half-life, so just make sure you know and understand what I'm talking about. Half-life is the amount of time, the time it takes for a substance to decay to half its original mass. So let's say, um, let's say I had um, this equation, y equals y naught e to the kt. This is our growth and decay formula. So what I'm saying here, half-life is the time when our y value, because this is decaying, is going to be exactly half of what we started with. Remember, this is our starting initial value. So this is what half-life is. If we wanted to solve for it, we would divide y naught over. We divide y naught, and these actually simplify out. And we have 1 half equals e to the kt. We can take the log of both sides, so ln of 1 half equals kt. And that's it. We would divide by k, divide by k, and that's our time. So our half-life is ln of 1 half over k. We need to find k. But this is what we're talking about when we talk about half-life. It's how long does it take for there to be half as much as we started with. Okay, let's take a look at one more thing. This is logistic. I know I'm speeding through, but I want to make sure I get through everything. All right, let's take a look at a logistic model. So here we have a lake. We want a logistic model here. We've got 10,000 over 1 plus 9 e to the negative t over 5. We want to find the population in 8 months. Well, 8 months is t. So t is 8. We're just going to plug it in right here for t. So we're going to get 10,000 over 1 plus 9 e to the negative 8 fifths. And we're just going to calculate that in our calculator and see what that is. So let's bring up our calculator. We're going to have 10,000 divided by, we're going to put the bottom in parentheses, 1 plus 9 times e to the negative eight-fifths. And we're going to get 3,549. So 3,549 fish. So we're going to put that right here. We got 3,549 fish in the lake after eight months. Okay, next question. After how many months will the fish population be 2,000? Well, we want to know how many months that's going to be. That means that we're going to be looking for time knowing our value. So we're going to say 2,000 is equal to 10,000 over 1 plus 9e e to the negative t over 5. And we have to solve this. So we're going to multiply both sides by this denominator. So we're going to get 2,000 plus, I'm going to go ahead and distribute here, so I'm going to have 18,000. e to the negative t over 5 equals 10,000. Okay, again, all I did was take the denominator and multiply over here, like cross multiply. Subtract 2,000, I'm going to get 8,000. Then I'm going to divide, so let's just go ahead and write that out. I'm going to put it up here because I have more room. So 18,000 e to the negative t over 5 equals 10,000. Divide 18,000 both sides. Uh, I'm sorry, this should be 8,000. Sorry, this should be 8,000. 
because I subtracted 2,000 from both sides here first. Okay, so I have 8,000. I'm just going to get rid of these zeros. They're bugging me. So I'm going to have 8 over 18. And I'm going to take the ln. So I'm going to have negative t over 5 equals ln of 8 over 18. And I'm going to multiply by negative 5. So t is going to be negative 5 ln of 8 over 18. Let's go ahead and calculate that out. Negative 5 times ln of 8 eighteenths, 4.05. So 4.05 months. Okay, so last question. Is there a maximum pop possible fish population that the lake can sustain? If you remember our problem that we did in class today, whenever we're dealing with logistic curves, there's a maximum to a logistic curve. We'll take a look at a logistic curve. And if you remember, a logistic curve has a, a real nice S form, right? So it goes, we've got a, a, a horizontal asymptote here and here. And this horizontal asymptote was called the limit to growth. It's the highest possible. It's what, it's what there's a maximum that it can possibly sustain. Yes, is there a maximum possible fish population that the lake can sustain? Yes, there is. Yes. Well, what is it? What, well, what geographical feature? I just told you it's the horizontal asymptote. What is it? We can easily find it from our equation, our model. So how do we find it? We take, as long as this is a 1, then we're going to take the numerator, and that's going to be our horizontal asymptote. So what is our limit to growth? In this case, it is 10,000 fish. We cannot go over 10,000 fish. Okay, so that's pretty much all that we need to talk about. We talked about the horizontal asymptotes in class in that this, this right here is t equals zero. Um, we can't have negative time. We actually don't want to have any negative fish populations. So our y values aren't going to ever be negative. Um, and, and I'm sorry, this is, um, this is y equals zero. So we're never going to have a negative fish population. We're always going to be between zero and 10,000. Okay, so you've got information on using applications of exponential growth, exponential decay in half-life, and logistic growth in which we have a maximum possible fish population of this lake. Tomorrow in class, we'll do several different problems that deal with both of these types of functions. Um, so if you have any questions, just go ahead and text me, go ahead and uh, email or ask at the bottom of this YouTube video, and I'll get back to you when I can. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.